And we are live once again, ladies, gentlemen, and those who lieth betwixt. Welcome once again to another uh, live stream here from the uh, Funcom Oslo office, because it must needs be remarked that it's Thursday, and that is our streaming day. So uh, I'm Jens Erik, I'm your community manager, and I'm joined by Alex from the Conan Exiles dev team, lead designer Hello. on Conan Exiles. Hi. I keep switching up the lead designer and senior designer titles sure. for some reason. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it means that it means that you're the guy in charge, essentially. Well, uh, within reason, Someone in charge. In charge. Uh, Hagrol wants to know: Is that the guy from Split? Uh, unfortunately, this isn't uh, James Split. McAvoy. Oh, him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're a McAvoy. It's not James McAvoy, but uh, I mean, you're both you're both British. Well, you're you're actually Russian, but hey, don't give that away. <laughs> Sorry. It's a secret. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, we are here to uh, answer questions mm. because uh, I figured that, you know, uh, we just released an update. The uh, A new dungeon has come out mm -hmm. and more loot has come out. Mm -hmm. A new dungeon boss has come out and, you know, some other, you know, other minor stuff as well that's uh, that's come out. And so, uh, you know, and also there's the debauchers of their Keto DLC. Right. So we figured, you know, people probably have some. Let's have a some, sit down. Yeah, people probably have, have some questions, some comments, etc. So we uh, we pulled a bunch of questions from from Reddit and from our forums. So we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through some of them. We probably don't have enough time to you know go through every single one, unfortunately, because you know there's we only have an hour. Oh, um, less nerves, Alex. Yes, less nerves. <laughs> it's been pretty stressful, so I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the down cycle. So far. But like, in general, you seem like a pretty chill person. Until shit breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny until things start breaking. Speaking about breaking... Yes. Uh, so, uh, there were some there were some issues that uh, appeared after the uh, the uh, um, update went out mm. on Tuesday. So, uh, like, the, the hot-button topics uh, are the uh, Relic Hunter Thralls, unfortunately, are uh, seemingly missing some items. Specific Relic Hunters. Yes, specifically yeah. Relic Hunters. Uh, we want to let you know up front that your item, like their items, their weapons and whatever, it's not gone. It's a loading issue that happens yeah. because of um, serialization data mismatch. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. The items are there. The stats will be returned. Try to protect them and hide them. <laughs> yes. Until, uh, until the, because right now we've fixed PC. Yes. It's the consoles that are awaiting the hotfix. Yes. And this is because we... The reason it's delayed is because we cannot just patch consoles because we have to go through first party. Yeah. Um, this is a throw between do we want to have simultane simultaneous release on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, or do we stagger them? Yeah. And our choice was to go for a simultaneous yeah. release, which means that now we need a simultaneous fix, which cannot happen, so we have to wait to fix consoles for a bit. Yeah. Which is uh, unfortunate, but we there's no way around it for the now. Yeah, what's uh, what's <coughs> great like what's great about PC on Steam at least we can just like push out an update yes. if we need to, and yes. then like this is this is how we did this time around. So, but yeah, that is getting fixed. It's already been fixed on PC, and the console update. Ah, uh, see, there out. we go. How do you protect two hundred of them? <laughs> he doesn't know what's coming in the Riders Five Warrior patch. Probably. Let's let's not talk about what. Let's not talk oh. about that. Let's not talk. Today's about gonna that. be a happy stream day. So this is gonna be a happy stream day. Uh, the other thing that people, uh, a lot of people, brought up in the question threads that I uh, that I made on Reddit and on our forums is that the Blood and Sand armors have had their um, their temperatures yes. uh, switched around. A data also, a data table bug, as far as I know. Uh, that's also going to be fixed. I think the fix for that is going to come in uh, next week. And I know that there's been some reactions to us saying like, hey, there's going to be a hot fix coming uh, next week. The reason for that is, you know, we want this to go through some proper testing. Yes. And like uh, a lot of you people have been there when we had patched things on a Friday. And yes. we would rather not patch things on yes, a Friday. Exactly. Unless, like absolutely 100% necessary. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, yes, like. There were there were issues after the patch. We apologize for you know any frustration that you may have had after this, but like we are working to fix this as quickly as possible, and we're working to fix it so there aren't any you know other um, but pulling other out ramifications. Brick, we don't want to bring the whole exactly house down. yeah. It's like a like it's like a tower of Jenga. You know, you want to be able to pull out the one thing and put it on top so the whole thing doesn't collapse. You know, that's sort of the thing that we're trying to do here. Uh, so yeah, that's getting fixed as well, and then um, there have uh, there's been some some performance issues that we believe that we have found mm. the culprit behind this. Uh, it's also being worked on. It's basically uh, some files that need some compressing. Well, very big textures. Yes. Um, 
on a side note, realistically speaking, that re- anyway, no, never mind. Tangent. <laughs> we will not get into the technicalities. All right, it. we will. Doesn't matter. We will try to keep it. You know, we'll fix it light as possible. And finally, uh, a lot of you people have uh, you people. I keep saying you people. It seems very rude. The people. The players. A lot of players have a lot of thralls. And with the new idle animations, there was a lot of sound effects with those idle oh. animations. <laughs> a lot of, you know, moaning and stretches and all that kind of stuff. Very good. Yes. So, uh, uh, so uh, that's basically just going to be removed entirely. So, uh, you know, all your all the thrall sounds are going to be that's going to be gone essentially. But uh, your thralls will still move. Your thralls will still have the. Uh, They'll animate. They'll the do something. Animation. They'll yes. do something interesting. Um. Mm. For realist for players though, we also had that. Uh, it was a, it was a it was not a nice experience for the RP community where the player character would animate. They mm-hmm. would do their idle animations, which would also have sound. Yep. And it would completely throw off the experience of what was happening. Yep. Right. So we need to we need to sit down and, and put some thinking into how to uh, how to allow both for for people that are in the RP community that. That want to have explicit control of over what their character does yep. and when they do it. Yes. Versus people that just want to have something happen on screen. Yes. Right. We need to we need to reconcile those two points of view. Yes. And uh, that actually, interestingly, uh, leads us into the first question. Almost like a great segue. Yeah, it's a very good segue. Uh, Alex is a little. I think maybe if you like scooch your your, your Let me chair get close a bit forward. Hold yeah. on. Let me. No, that's a bit too much. Like this way. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Um, there's a bit of run up here, but uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get into it. Uh, Abo Manir uh, from our forums asks, uh, I think it would be interesting to hear about how the design team learns about play styles and works to support or change those. Uh, do you have people on the team log into official servers? Do you do focus groups? And do you look for examples primarily within Conan Exiles or from other games as well? Uh, a lot of the challenges play uh, people have discovered in the arena and debauchery patches have shown me that my knowledge of how other people play is very limited. And my isu- assumptions wouldn't be right. And then, like, he goes into some uh, examples, uh, <coughs> specifically uh, the fact that you mentioned with the the idle animations. Like yeah. for certain yeah, yeah, role yeah. players, it's like they some, want full control it's, it's, over their character. It's something that people don't. Um, if you're not part of the community, it's not something that you at all value. And yeah. the second it's brought up, it's like, yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. So then you get to the point of how do you reconcile those two opinions, um, those two points of view. The other thing that you get into is that it also highlights to us how how Conan Exiles is a different game to different people. Yeah. For me, it is a different game to what it is to Robert, to what it is to uh, Nicola, for example, to yeah. what it is to everyone to me. else. Yeah. Right. So, it, reconciling all of those viewpoints is is a ongoing challenge that we have to fight day in day out with. This is this is something that we just you try to get better with it every yeah. cycle. Um, if I were to say how we. Let me get the specifics of this question, just so I don't butcher. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can, I can sort of go into it as well. But he, he asks specifically, like, how does the design team learn about different playstyles? That's the community team's, yes. like, part yes. of the community team's job, is knowing how groups of people knowing play. our people. Yes, it's knowing and, like, the, know, our player base. Knowing how people play. Knowing that, oh well, like right now, well, my, for example, at a certain point, everyone was running around with hammers. Yes. And it's up to the community to be like, hey, Red flag. everyone's running around with hammers. Hammer? Why is no one else using it? Everyone's else? just doing this mm-hmm. attack with the hammers all the time. Yes. Uh, maybe we should change a thing in the game yes. so you know people don't just always do this with mm. the hammers all the time. So we have this um, we have the layer of communication between the player base and the and the dev team specifically, which is the community team, mm-hmm. and the guys filter in information and pass it to us as quickly as they get it. So if 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 you see something that doesn't look right, doesn't feel right. Let us know. We read the forums, yep. Reddit, our forums. Uh, what's the other one? The one with the blue birdie. Twitter? Twitter? Yes. <laughs> Twitter also. I read Twitter a I lot. I read Twitter. To honest, it's Trump. That's quite entertaining. Um, yeah. King Knox asks, why are we catering to the RP players? We try to cater to uh, as many players yes. as we can. And we try to, because we know that, you know, there are people who only want to play on PvE servers. There are people who only want to do PvP. There are people who only mm. want to do building. Mm. There are role players. There are people who uh, want to stuff as many mods as humanly possible into the game and see how long they can survive. Right. Like uh, I, we're trying to cater to as many people as possible, basically. So you know that means that uh, some updates will be more focused towards role players, and other updates might be more focused on uh, PvP combat, PvE stuff, for example, or things like that. It's it's a bit of a balance that we're trying to you know find with every update. Right, exactly. Um, 
we don't go out of our way to say something will be specifically a patch for this community or a patch for that community. A lot of it boils down to um, the amount of time we have to develop something, the features that we want to develop. For example, for Blood and Sands, the delivery of the two weapons, uh, we wanted to expand the breadth of things that players can do with the character in terms of fighting. Right. And we also wanted to rebalance and reposition some of the weapons in a uh, in a play style fashion. So we, we did the spear changes, we introduced the two-handed axe, we introduced the uh, short sword to try to to try to allow more of a playstyle choice with the weapons instead of everything being I want to move away from the from the concept of every weapon is always viable in every situation. Right. Where you should you have eight slots to carry stuff. Yeah. If you want to be good at holding a choke point, you should have this. If you want to be good while this is happening, you should have that. So on and so forth. Yep. We're going to continue to expand on that paradigm. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Solarius from the forums asks, uh, are there any plans on implementing movement while we attack? Charge attacks as gap closers against running opponents, block mechanics for weapons, etc. Right now, blocking is reserved only for a shield, and we can't move while the animations play. We are rooted to the ground until the animation ends, except if you yes. roll out of it. So, um, with... How to put this? There are no plan. There are no development plans specifically. There are always ideas, and we always would like to do things. Yep. The Riders of Hyboria patch will change things significantly. So, before making any plans, when mounts come in, there are some things that must happen for the normal combat of the characters to allow mounts, mounts to interface with characters that are unmounted, with NPCs, so on and so forth. Yep. So, these features going in together will change how people play the game. Um, once that goes out, we will, again, reassess, see where we're at, and see where we want to go based on feedback. That is generally the cycle of things that we do. Yes. Uh, right. Next up is uh, from Reddit, Yetarguten, which is a uh, which uh, means the shepherd's boy in Norwegian. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, he asked, I mean, this, this comes up a lot. Like, I think it comes up like every six yeah, months yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, will we able? Will we ever be able to command thralls to be aggressive or passive, so people can visit our homes without fear of being attacked? Will we ever? Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe on that one. Maybe. Uh, and speaking of animations, of course, people also always want to know if you know turning animations is ever going to be a thing on our characters because, right, right now, if you turn your character around, they will usually just spin on yeah. something like that. So their one of the, one, I, can't, I don't remember the patch that I, I actually went out of my way to implement this myself. So one of the patches that we did, I think it was actually maybe blood and sands, or mm -hmm. could be debaucheries. When you stand still and you spin your camera, your character spins, right? And it looks a bit awkward. So now there is a checkbox that says, don't spin me when I stand still and spin. Sure, but that, that moves the camera, but like specifically mm. like moving oh, you mean actual your character, animations. like a person who moves, okay. like who rotates, right. will move their feet, oh. like shuffle their feet essentially. <clears throat> the turn rate of our characters is pretty high right now, because if you flick your mouse, you can basically do a 360 rotation relatively quickly. Mm. So to justify, the <clears throat> to justify the animation content, we'd have to slow that down. Um, we'll see. I don't know yet. We'll okay. see. But it's definitely something to think about, because it raises the aesthetic quality of the game significantly, because it looks better. Yes. All right. Uh, there was another one from the same uh, question asker. Now that there are new th idle animations, will there be an option to choose different animations for thralls? Which I think is an interesting. It is uh, an interesting thing. Because this... then, for example, like for for dancers, for example, right, you could choose which dance you right. want them to perform. Right. Absolutely. This goes back to um, allowing people to play exiles how they want to play exiles. We just have to sit down, like you know, we're going to release X amount of new content specifically for dancer thralls. Mm -hmm. and then, how do we let players choose to play this instead of that? Or that instead of this we have to it's another one of those problems where we can't choose for the people we have to give options but the delivery of options is vastly more complicated than us just saying this is what happens with the dance thralls um, so it's more expensive it is more valuable mm -hmm. and if people keep talking about it we will do it <laughs> that is generally how things happen the more we talk the more the community talks about it the more the high the more likely we are to do it that is that is absolutely really? true uh, I mean, at least the the yeah, it's the more likely we are to do it. That doesn't mean specifically like that. That's not a you know, that's not a. Uh, that doesn't Am mean I you opening should, the floodgates? I, kind of. <laughs> I was just gonna say that doesn't mean you should make like ten threads about the same thing on the forums, for example. But it yeah. means like the more we see people talking about the same thing, 
the more like the community team, for example, is likely to go to the dev team and be like, okay, a lot of people are mm. talking about this now. This is probably something that we should do. Mm. Can we look into mm. doing this potentially? And Absolutely. then you know, they will then have to investigate if it's possible or not. Uh, all right. It's like with hairstyles. Everyone wants more hairstyles. Everyone wants, wants more, more hairstyles, hairstyles yeah. uh, more uh, facial features, yes. like more facial yes. options, etc. That was actually one of the. Uh, that was actually one, was of that the, one of the questions. That was oh, one of the wow, questions. We ahead. Who was the person um, that asked? Just that so we was, give them a shout out. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I can't find it. Um, it's here somewhere. At least it was here somewhere, and then maybe we'll I it took it out. Who knows? All right. Uh, no news four twenty asks uh, the map outside of the death wall looks fairly detailed. Will you ever allow people to turn off the death wall in single player so we can look at the extra space? I know you want to extend the playable map, mm. but I love exploring out of bounds mm. in games. Um, in single player, you can do whatever, al almost whatever you want, which means through the mods, you can remove the, the wall completely if you like. Right. Um, on official servers, it is more problem. Let's stick to the question. Yeah. <laughs> we will never do it. Right. There, can, there probably are mods that allow you to do it. Right. Um, End. <laughs> Next question. But it, I mean, it should also be mentioned that I think, like, out, sorry, outside, like the the death wall, mm -hmm. there's nothing there. No, there's no it's context. Just, yeah, it's, it's just, just it's just more sand and there's more like sand, texture. more height map, uh, yeah. uh, uh, distance blockers, and we hide dungeons over there. Also, <laughs> we do actually. If you're ever inside a dungeon, you open your map, you might see that your cursor is in the upper right corner of the screen, uh, which is where we hide all the dungeons. I remember actually before we uh, before we rolled out the Frozen North update during mm -hmm. early access. Uh, there were people who were able to clip past the death wall. Oh yeah, okay. and we're just running around in like the height map and the texture map. Like, and of course, they're building oh my god, bases I, I, I found that. No, they weren't building bases. Oh. They were just oh, be able to to run around because we blocked building. But they were like, oh my god, I found the the northern area. I'm running around in it. And it's like there's nothing, there's nothing here. here. And then like I had to be on the forums mm. and read it and tell people like, yeah, that's just there's nothing. It's just there's just yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Black NZ from Reddit asks, uh, while I love the addition of the static rope bridge, is there a possibility of using the horizontal elevator system as an extendable version in the future? It seems like the perfect way to bridge a gap without using a moving platform. Um, there is no plan, but we did talk about this a couple of times. We just yeah. couldn't get it to look good and feel good and not break on dedicated servers yeah. quickly enough. This is why we didn't do it. If <laughs> we could do it quickly and effectively, we would have done it. Um, it is somewhere on our board. That's it. Right. Yeah. But like it's um it is tricky to use it than to use the, the horizontal elevator, but like mm. it's it's absolutely possible. It just yeah. you know, you have to get the role physics bit. right, getting everyone to see it correctly, getting it to replicate to everyone correctly, yeah. making sure people can't abuse the crap out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the final thing. Yeah. It's kinda like the major <laughs> the major issue. <laughs> All right. Um da -da -da. Since uh, this comes in from Cindy Syringe on the forum, since Cindy movements Syringe. and controls were updated in the last patch, will we ever see a camera zoom in, zoom out feature? That doesn't work with the mouse wheel. Uh, I think it should work with the mouse wheel. Maybe they're playing on console. They didn't specify. Mm, uh, but like okay. on on PC at least, <coughs> if you uh, scroll your mouse forward, then the camera will zoom mm. in on them. If you're in the vanity cam, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll back and forth, and the the camera will zoom in and out. Uh, I can actually do a quick a quick demo. A quick demo. Demo demo. Because we have the game running in the background. So uh, I just need to make sure that everything is working as it should. Um, question, 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 question. Hello, can I think maybe. Uh, yep. Is it light? No, it's not. It's no, it's, it's getting there. It's, it's just a bit, it's, it's a bit behind. That's mm. all. Uh, and yeah, and I think also uh, Robert is in Twitch chat answering uh, some people's like smaller, smaller questions. <laughs> But yeah, and of course, like the one of one of the other main things that keep coming back is uh, a uh, customization option for characters after you've made them. So like a, a barber to change your hairstyle, like makeup options, etc., 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 or like a potion that you just drink yeah. and then you know you're like mounts. Soon. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> okay. That was sarcasm, um, by the way. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe I mean, you won't. you know that people aren't gonna. Okay, I need to just uh, first. I need to activate admin mode. Uh, after it's the a whole, nice base. yeah, this is built by uh, by uh, Suregil for the uh, the stream that we the the Ooh. trailer I mean that we were supposed to do. It's um, it's a I just need to, tavern. I just need to figure a place that I can stand. I can probably stand here. So, right here, for example, if I zoom in and out, then I will you know zoom in a bit on my character. Yeah, I see. Okay, I see. Well, maybe we'll, we can go a little bit more extreme. Yeah, yeah. and we then if I also if I turn on the rotatable stationary camera, yeah. I can also go here and zoom in a bit. But then eventually, you know, it clips into. 
clips into my character. But if That's I go into true. vanity cam, I can zoom way in. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty fair out. Yes. But, you know, it's it's a thing that I think you know some some players might appreciate if we if it's some if it's an option for them in mm. the long run. Should look. We'll look into this. We will look into this. Uh, okay. Uh, next up from Kumiko from the forums. Uh, I've always felt that Conan Exile's story is incomplete. In the end, you just walk away from the Exile Lands, but a few things mentioned in the story have been left unanswered. Uh, the Serpent Ring of Seth, the one who stole it, and who or what put you on the cross. My question is... Uh, I mean, so, it's sort of a two-part question. Will the last dungeon you implement be concluding Conan Exile's story? Or did the story come to its conclusion with the Exile leaving the Exile Lands and thus leaving the Serpent Ring of Seth, the one who, set, the one who stole it, and the cause of the Exile's crucifixion behind? Oh. I mean, spoiler warning. <laughs> Not going to spoil it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, as far as I know, the idea is to always finish the story. But is the story finished? That's that a good question. <laughs> that is a very good question. We will find out. <laughs> we will absolutely Maybe find out. Maybe next year. There is more stuff to come, at least. We can, we can say that, at least. Um, oh, here's another um, excellent one. So, Gen Gen Art from the forum asks... Uh, given that a huge chunk of your audience are role players, mm. you clearly do care about them, which alone makes your dev team to be appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, have you considered hiring slash paying an active role player to help work on content that is supposed to be for role players? Uh, some things you added with a new mm. DLC are truly interesting for the RP community. Others are pure headaches. Sorry about that. And it does make people wonder if you might need assistance with that coming right from the source. So that would be, you know, partly on me as a community manager and the community uh, team in general to... Uh, you know, be able to sort of tap into that community and ask, like, specifically, hey, is this something that... This is why communication is super, super yes. useful. Like, this is why communicating directly to the community team is is almost priceless for us, right? Is that we get a, a direct feed of information and preference rather than uh, us going through and, and nitpicking over the different locations, such as yeah. threads, forums, whatever, 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 about people's wants and desires. Going through the community team accelerates the communication massively. Absolutely massively. Um, about hiring someone, <laughs> I don't know. That's I don't. A difficult question. I don't think. I don't think we've ever considered it. I don't think we've ever. But considered uh, it. you know, like who knows, right? Yeah, I I was for a time uh, active on a um, on a role players forum mm. uh, specifically to like sort of see what people you know liked and didn't like, and then eventually I. Stopped going there, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, the they're very serious people. They can be sometimes, and that's you know that can yeah. be a good thing. It is really Absolutely. a good thing. Uh, but yeah, like specifically hiring uh, someone, like it, it's it's a bit of a gray area where you know, are, do we then are they a advisor? Yeah. I guess is that what yeah. their role would be? And consultant. Like, but then you role have like consultant. then you have like one person or two people or five people speaking on behalf of everyone. Yeah. And, you know, How do you justify that? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like it's. Uh, it's more up to the community uh, team to see, like, this group is talking mm. about this, this group mm. is talking about this, this group is talking about this, and sort of try to boil it down yeah. to, you know, the, the bare essentials of, like, how many people are talking about X, Y, Z. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, hello, hello. Will you have camouflage for buildings? That is something that I would actually like to experiment with at some point in the future. Yeah? We'll see. Yeah. Yes. That'd be cool. I mean, yes. people already are fairly... Um, uh, clandestine creative. bases yeah like people are already fairly creative with their like uh, like hiding their bases mm. in places but you know want to really give them more tools makes it more interesting yeah exactly. allows like the smaller guild the smaller clans to compete with the bigger clans hide my stuff can't find my base we can find you we can find you because you occupy the majority of maps so on and so forth yep <coughs> uh, any plans on increasing the decay timers on thralls after the bases decayed we have areas where there are tons of thralls just standing around after bases decayed weeks ago uh, watch the space and see what happens. Yes. Yep. Basically. All right. Uh, da -da -da. All right. This next one I think is pretty interesting. Avert your eyes from the forums. Asks, oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. What are you using? What are you using for source material? And considering part of your co and considering your part of the Conan universe, uh, the Conan books, magazines, comics, movies, or all of the above. So basically, what's our source material for adding stuff into the game? All of the above would be yeah. just. Salt. I mean, we. We look at everything, mm. and then, if need be, we put our spin on yeah. it. Yeah. One of the uh, biggest problems is that the majority of people's um, relation relationship with Conan, with the Conan universe, is through the film. Yeah. Which means Arnold. Yep. And Cole. Yep. Um, 
sadly, that's not always <laughs> true in the books because he's meant to be. He is in some cases a different character in the books than he is portrayed through in the films. Um, it is is the difficult throb that Joel has to deal with. Yes, and this is why he is the. What is what is the, the he's creative director is creative his title. Director, yes, I like to refer right. to him as lore master. The lore master. Yeah, because yes. he like you ask him you ask him a question and he gives you boom like five yes. answers that you actually didn't need. Like I asked him because like we tried to find like a pithy like Conan esque title mm. for the stream and then we landed on community mm -hmm. mailbag because everyone knows what that means. And so I asked Joel like what do people use to communicate with in like the Conan universe? Are they like carrier pigeons, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And uh, Joel says, well. If you're like very like low class, you wouldn't know enough people to be able to send messages to them anyway. Yeah. Um, or if you were like higher class, you would use maybe carrier pigeons depending on the the area. If you were you know, or Mail you would runners. just use messengers, runners, runners, etc. If you were a sorcerer, you would just use dark magic, mm. and then that's it. But yeah, it's it's all it's all Joel's decision in the end. Like we have to ask Joel, like, hey, does this sort of is, does this fit into Conan? Does universe? it does it make does it make thematic sense yeah. for this to be a thing? Um, so I see an interesting question that I'd like to pick up. Yes. <clears throat> Seth asks, are there plans to rework the armor system? Currently, PvP has been ruined by armor having low weight, allowing light dodges, and having damage reduction of 60%. It's a bit dramatic. It is ruined. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it, is the current, it is the current play style, and we will try to address that play style in Riders of Hyboria. Stay tuned. Alrighty. Ah, I think this is an interesting one from uh, Shadoza. 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 Um, now, you know, a lot of this is a bit, it's a bit harsh. No, not necessarily Ooh, harsh, but okay. it's, a bit, it's a bit direct <coughs> sometimes. But uh, it has been stated that some believe the end game is, uh, the end of the game is rather bland. Mm. Uh, I believe this is felt because there's no incentive to restart the game with another character. Because, you know, yes, you, that's true. you yes. lose a bracelet, you walk out, and then new character. Uh, I feel that offering new content for the start of the game is as important as keeping things fresh as the end of the game. I agree. Perhaps yes. more if you desire players to use the keystone to start again. Uh, I noticed much of the new content serves those at the end game without considering those that complete end game and move forward into replay. Uh, since the game offers this type of ending, I wonder why there's not more content that supports creating a new character and replaying the game. Can you explain the decision to avoid offering more content for replay value? Um, sure. We have more people in the end game than we do in the early game. That's the reason. <laughs> it's very quick and easy. Yes, that, that, <laughs> it's just it's just statistics that yeah. are true. Um, people that re-roll are, are few and far between. Yeah. Obviously, would love to put more content in the early parts of the game, specifically for people that re-roll. But when you weigh up uh, the community sizes against people that re-roll and are in the beginning versus people that are in the end game, the end game almost always outweighs the beginning. Yeah. And like the the whole idea is that it's supposed to be a difficult choice at mm. the end. It's supposed to be a difficult choice. Like, do you stay essentially a slave to the bracelet, <coughs> even though you've built up all this power, all these resources? Do you stay inside this confined area, or do you choose to uh, to remove it and then leave, knowing that you're leaving all of the stuff yep. behind, essentially? Because then, you know, you would have to start over again. This is also one of those um, problems with Conan Exile specifically that. Um, it's a different game for different people. Some people, when they see a, co uh, a Conan game, expect it to be of a certain type, such yes. as you play through it once yep. and you're done. Yep. Other people expect it to be played forever, and this is us trying to reconcile the reconcile the two the two paradigms somewhere and landing somewhere in between. And yeah. in the end, no one's really happy. And then <laughs> complain, and we try to do what we I can. I mean, it's, it's better it. if better if like most people are 50% happy than no one, like everyone being 0% happy, I think. Maybe. The world. I don't know. <laughs> it's better that a few love something than a lot of people like it. I guess. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't know if that's true for this context. And uh, as uh, Easy Ling on Twitch pod said, uh, I think the end game starts at level 60 when we can build stuff. That's, that's true. true. That's that true. is relatively true. Yeah, that is a point in our uh, of our things that we'd like to address. Uh, we will try to get to it. Yeah. I don't disagree with that statement at all. Uh, I actually finally found the person uh, that had the question I was looking for earlier. Are there currently, or will there possibly ever be, any plans to add more diverse facial options to character creation? I think I can speak for a fair amount of players when I say such an update would be very much appreciated. That comes from the forums from Booger Party. That's a great full name. <laughs> that's a very good screen name. The more. The more our community hears about people's wants for new facial, new uh, faces, new hairdos, new uh, new um, 
what's the what's the keyword that we use for the non combat armors? The social clothing, social clothing. Yep. The more we hear, the more we hear about that, the higher the chance we'll do it. Yep. That's basically what it comes down to. Uh, here's one that's come up a couple of times. Uh, why did you nerf the animation speed on the spear? Oh. Uh, it's really slowly now on the third attack. You can be interrupted, etc., etc. Uh, we talked about this on the uh, yeah, we didn't. when we showed off the, the the new spear animations, but maybe you can touch sure. on it again. Um, I guess it depends on when exactly in time he's talking about it. Because if he's I'm talking thinking about like it post the uh, blood, post and blood and sand. So yeah. the spear frame rate it runs at uh, 25 frames. On the heavy and the light is also 25 frames. It has not changed. Yep. That's it. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to take a question from uh, YouTube because it popped out a bunch, a couple of times already. Uh, would you guys consider adding one more game mode like PvP competitive with a bi monthly wipe, slightly higher harvesting rates? The server wipe. Uh, uh, <laughs> the PvP is getting quite large. We need a home. So uh, this comes up quite a few times, mm. uh, especially recently because, you know, there, there is a lot of a lot of players on our different servers, uh, a lot of buildings left behind, sometimes thralls left behind, etc. And there will always be people asking us, like, could you in, like give us servers that wipe every month, that wipe every two months, etc. And we had this back in the yes, day. Yes, that, that is what I was going to say. We had this back in the day. We had something called well, we had PVP Blitz. We renamed them PVP Mayhem. Like they had, they had increased uh, resources. They had increased XP. And all they that would kind wipe of stuff. every what? I don't know. They would wipe every month. Yes. Yeah, okay. And they were unfortunately among our least popular servers, yep. which is why we uh, cut them eventually, yep. uh, because we figured that it was easier to just focus on the the three server types that exactly. we have, have now: PVP, PVE Conflict, and PVE Pure. I guess or just PVE essentially. Um, because yeah, the the monthly wiped servers or bi-monthly wiped servers uh, weren't that popular in like the grand scheme of things. So, but we and can experiment with this. If, it, if it, this this goes back to the to the to the give us a shout and tell us what you think problem, yeah. where if enough people tell us what they think, uh, we might try to bring a couple back. Yes, and see how it goes from there. Right. Yeah. It's not that like, radical for us to bring up a server with a different rule set, wipe it 30 days later, and then reset it. Yeah, and like for all we know, you know, player, uh, what am I trying to say? Player attitudes to have changed. Might have yeah. changed, you know, yeah. since since way back then. Because it's no longer about learning how the game works. Yeah. Because more people, the 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 people that play the game know how it works. They want to have a fresh experience on a regular basis yeah. instead of a stale experience. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, da -da 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 uh, Chrome's Faithful uh, from the forums asks, uh, will Funcom be open to given, giving Chrome an overhaul or any additional features in the future? Oh, I was thinking about this. Thing, <laughs> I mean, so, the, the, like, Chrome, we've always called Chrome the, um, like, the atheists or, like, the agnostics option because Chrome does nothing, he gives nothing, he does not care, and that is it. And I think, I think maybe in, like, early development, the idea was to, like, have him... Like send a monster after you if you tried to pray to him, but yeah, that was sort of scrapped. That was actually. like, it's a bit heavy handed. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, are there any? Like, I don't think Chrome has any. I like, have to ask Joel. Yeah, I think this Joel is basically was, what it comes down yeah. to. And like, I think Joel would sort of put the cub kibosh on that. I don't think he would, you know, be open to that sort mm. of thing. But you know, as as uh, Conan himself says in. The, book, the books that I'm probably, you know, mangling the quote right now, but, you know, Chrome gives men strength upon their, the day of their birth, and what more could a man ask for from the gods? That's it. Some star metal. <laughs> there actually was a question about star metal. I think it was on Reddit. Someone asked, like, when is star metal spawning? And because he had to go into the admin panel to get uh -huh, star metal. Okay. So if you want, if you're watching and you want to know how you get star metal, it drops from meteors, uh, usually in the, the north, north uh, area. Mm. That's how they get there. All right. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where are we now? We are here. We're actually, uh -huh. I didn't think we would get through all the questions, but we actually, got through, quite all efficient here we actually got through all the questions. We even picked up questions um, off, ch off chat. Last one on this list. Then we can take some more questions mm -hmm. from the chat because we have about 20 minutes left. Uh, next one comes in from Multigon. It's a two-part question. So we're going to go for the first one first. How are the new-ish two-handed battle axes and short swords shaping up? Uh, obviously, balance is <laughs> tricky, but do you see further adjustments on the horizon? Um, we tweaked this. We tweaked the two-handed axe, 
and the 200 sword. The 200 sword again was in the butchery sped up by if I remember right, 13% relative to what it was in Blood and Sands. Mm -hmm. um, it was made a little bit more easier to use. So now we're going to see where that is uh, in terms of positioning, because it was it was with the new with the new implementation, it was it was just not competitive enough to justify its uh, role identity. So that was sped up. The um, I don't think we have done anything with a short sword recently because we've not seen enough info about people's preferences using it. It is useful in some cases, in other cases it's not very useful, which is exactly what we intended, where it's it's a single target damage delivery system. Yeah. Um, we need to see more with the short sword, the the the, the two hundred axe and the two hundred um, crossbow, <laughs> the two hundred axe <laughs> and the two handed uh, sword were buffed. For debaucheries. Yes. By 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 a little bit. Uh, Blake to try hard. Can you add a crossbow? Well, the crossbows in the game. They can mod it for themselves if they like. Oh yeah. So they're the crossbows are in the modding kit, but they're not spawnable by admin panel. No. As far as I know. No. Because, they're not spawnable by yeah. admin panel. Yes. The... We'll think about it. <laughs> Depends how many overtime hours I want to put in to get the crossbow. In. <laughs> I mean, we did have crossbows for early access, yes. and then eventually we ripped them out because yes. we figured this isn't working yes, as we exactly. wanted to. And um, you know, at the risk of sounding you know a bit you know rude and direct like that, is that That's is game basically development. Basically, what happened. That yes. is game development. Sometimes you realize this isn't really working. Just get it out. Uh, the final one from Multigun, uh, which uh, you know it's a bit of a is long this question. A question. I don't know. We can we'll see. Uh, Multigun says, "Take us behind the scenes, if you would. Obviously, you aren't going to discuss mount features and specifics, mm. uh, but I would like to know how the decision played out to implement mounts altogether." As I recall, in past streams, uh, Ian Sedek and Tasha talked about how the dem team has periodically probed, probed to see how uh, mounts were behaving with the latest version of the game. How has that worked out? Uh, did you do a typical test and, w and go, hey, these were great now, let's do the thing, or were there other elements involved in that decision? Um, <laughs> we always knew we wanted to have mounts. Yeah. Um, however, there were other priorities at the time than delivering mounts. For example, crashes, this doesn't work, that isn't fun to do, they fix this, fix that, so on and so forth. So we all, in the back of our minds, we always knew we wanted to do mounts. Um, eventually, enough fires were put out to a point where we can, we can say, you know what, let's do it, let's do it well, yeah. let's do it properly. Let's make it, let's make it something that players want to engage. Let's make it something that players want to use. Let's make it a meaningful system. We didn't want to deliver just another, 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 transport system where instead of teleporters you just mount the horse then you dismount a couple of seconds later to fight on foot yeah. we want to make it actually meaningful um, which means that the feature is expensive so we had to take our time yeah that's it and it's not just like uh, it's not just get on a horse ride and then that's what you do with the with the horse like as we if you, you saw the announcement like we're adding in mounted combat for yes. example with yes. a variety meaningful of different mounted combat with right. a variety of different weapons uh, I'm not sure if we can mention. Uh, I are. don't want to because that's <laughs> stealing thunder. All right, we're gonna keep that under wraps for the time being. But yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. And so, uh, yeah, it is, uh, as Alex says, essentially a. It's a matter of priority yes. in the end. Like it is, uh, us trying to figure out like what is most important right now. What seems to be most important for the community. And for, for parts of the community, it's always bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes. For other parts of the community, it's new content, uh, it's uh, dungeons, it's new swords, it's new uh, armors, all that mm, kind of stuff. Yep. This, then, this relates yeah. actually to the, to the different game for different people. Yes. People have vastly different priorities. Yeah. Some communities want to see another three dungeons. Mm -hmm. Other communities want us to see uh, PvP rebalanced yes. or sieging rebalanced. Yeah. And other communities want to have more things that their character does while standing still, while sitting down, so on and so forth, extrapolate. And then all of a sudden we have to pick and choose yeah. about uh, which features we pull into the game. Uh, it's difficult. <laughs> Javidicus says, the amount of combat I tested at uh, TwitchCon 2019 felt really good for being as early as it was. Thank you very much. What did we have there? We had just one hand. It was very early. I think it was very the, early. It was yeah. one hand, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I think he's going to, he, he or she is going to be pleasantly surprised <laughs> when they experience what we're going to be putting in. We hope so. I, yeah. I've, I've given it some some tests here and there, and I really, I, I like I like the stuff that we're doing with it. Yes. I really like the... It's meaningful. Uh, yes. I think by 
it's choice. Why we have choice to, is important. That's why we have to do it. Uh, all right, so I think well we're done with these, so we can take some more questions. Focus more on this. Take Look some more this. questions from chat, and that's, as I mentioned those words, the chat app is probably going to freeze again. Uh, so um, <coughs> Sketchy says, can we get an option for turning off thrall idle sounds in the future? Those sounds are being removed in the next hotfix yep. uh, because it's uh, yeah they they shouldn't really be there. We'll honestly. see if we need to make a system specifically to resolve that exact problem. Like we, some people may want them, others not. Yeah, we'll see. We'll investigate it. We'll try to find a cost-effective solution. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh God, no! It's uh, <laughs> is it a difficult question? Do it. Do no, it not necessarily. Question. I mean, oh. uh, it's something that comes up <coughs> often. It's um, text chat for consoles. Sure. Which uh, I believe we investigated at some yeah. point. There is a plan. Maybe we don't know yet. Yeah. Maybe. That's it. That's a Sorry. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's one of those uh, priority uh, I think things. I spoke about this actually about to someone maybe three or four days ago. Uh, what is the likelihood of adding a single slot animal pen, something we can hide in a small base? That comes up all the time. Um, <laughs> Wait for the patch. <laughs> Which patch? Oh, the next one. OK. The, the, the writers of Hyboria. Oh, next, next content. Update. Oh, excuse me. Yes. yes. Excuse me. The, the next the, the the patch, next patch can mean yes. hotfix. So. I'm sorry before someone holds me to it. <laughs> Uh, uh, please consider having purges come with siege equipment to attack your bases. That is a great idea. I would love to do that. Palm 521. 521, which is uh, yes, on our forum. I would love to do that. Uh, they were also the person who asked about the, um, the um, scavenging of like PVE, like decaying PVE bases and stuff. Is this one stuff? Yeah, stuff floats around for a little bit too yeah. long. We need to, but we also need to but address we, that with a very soft hand because some people play the game very aggress for aggressive reasons, yep. and uh, other people don't. So we have to be relatively gentle with things like decay timers and thrall decay timers. Maybe even revisit the whole the the whole decay system overall. I don't know yet. We need to sit down and think about this meaningfully uh, um, because it is it is like some some servers have vast amounts of things populating them. Yes. However, the people that play on them are very 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 few. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, Vladimir says, "Is there any possibility for the mounts to have some kind of armor slot so we can put armors on them? Maybe." Wait and see. Uh, did we intentionally remove reinforcement kits from torches, or is this a bug? From torches. Isn't I torch did not know about that. Yes, the regular torches. What is, uh, how would that affect it? I'll look into it. OK. Uh, will the mounts update also add in siege elephants, mammoths, siege rhinos, and direwolves, tigers, mounts like Age of Conan? Uh, mounts are horses only. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they uh, might have to wait for the other it. stuff. <laughs> I mean, if if uh. we ever. So I mean, so uh, yeah, answering a question like that sort of like what we don't do we don't want to open we don't want to open the door too much. Like of on the one hand, like I personally would like to see more types of mounts. Sure, absolutely. but I also know that for the time being, we're just adding horses, and mm. then if able, we will look into the other exactly things. exactly if able. That's a that's a if. <laughs> so don't take that as confirmation of, you know, anything, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um yeah. The uh, uh da, 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 da. Mm, Yeah, the animal pen as well came up again. Uh a lot of people yeah, because I think YouTube is like a minute or like two oh, minutes okay. behind. A bit so like uh -huh. they're not getting the, the questions just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh any thoughts on wearable light sources? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to share some of these thoughts? Uh, I have mm, no, no, I don't want to share. Okay. There, there is a plan to do something interesting for dark places where you do not have to have a torch, but I don't want to give it away. Okay. Sorry. Absolutely. Uh, Serindas eighty one says, personally, I would love to have the ability to place dancers thralls uh, to give dancers thralls musical instruments and have them perform music. Uh, we have plan for that. That plan got. Sidelined. We may have had a plan for that. So we had a plan. We might even have the instruments. <laughs> they got sidelined because it was just spoilers. Ooh, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. We'll think about it. <laughs> we will absolutely think about it. I'd love to have a thrall playing like a guitar. Actually, technically, it cannot be a guitar. It can't Joel be a guitar. Can my ass. Yeah. No, it's not a guitar. It I'm needs sorry. to be like a flute or like drums or yeah. something, or maybe a horn of some kind. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Joel. <laughs> Not a guitar. Uh, of course, siege weapons is also something that we. Uh, yes. That's. Uh, oh, we have a cool rework for the trebuchet client. I don't want to give it away yet. Okay. Trebuchet is getting some uh, some attention. Uh, 
another question that came up, I think, on the uh, forums and on Reddit was a question about crossplay. Uh, because uh, I know that Sony has opened up crossplay on PlayStation 4. Right. Uh, Microsoft has opened up, I think it's like PC to Xbox crossplay. Uh, as far as I know, on like a pure technical level, we've never really. Um, it's never really been. It's never been something that we've yeah, had. Like, we didn't have for. a plan for. It. We'll have to look into it because if, it, if possible, absolutely, that would yeah. be fantastic. Sure, that would be fun. Really, that would really be fantastic yeah. if we can get crossplay up and rolling. We need to. See, we need to stand and have a look at it. Sure. All right. Uh, amounts, spec drops. Uh, give UI face lift to the stamina. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> what about battering rams? That's a good suggestion. Yes, that's Absolutely. a great suggestion. Uh, it would be great if there could be uh, half height or third height platforms and stairs, like the stage platform and stairs, but are stackable foundations to change heights for the varied terrain. Uh, yes, I agree. The problem <laughs> with doing that, though, is that if you do it for one set of building pieces, you expect it to be done for another set of building pieces. So the cost is exponential. Yeah. Right. So that's really the biggest problem with adding uh, meaningful meaningful bits to one building set because people automatically ask like hey you guys added it for sandstone and the base building sets but you didn't add it for the dlc sets yeah what gives and you know there are which is a legitimate scale, yeah. which is a legitimate point which yeah and there are a lot of building pieces already yes. Yes. Uh, which actually uh brings me to a question that i actually skipped earlier from arsenal control on the forums uh who says if you own all dlc with base game pieces mm -hmm. included mm -hmm. there are 12 different types of building pieces cluttering up our crafting menus yeah. If you unlock the tier three building pieces, all DLCs are unlocked as, unlocked as well, regardless if you plan on building with them. Being able to sort by DLC or simply unlock the DLCs one at a time would greatly increase our quality of life. He is absolutely correct. Yes. Absolutely correct. We will try to get that done. I don't know if it will be in that exact uh, worded state, but we'll try to make that that GUI element more user-friendly. Yeah. But uh, on the same side, like we don't want you to have to... Uh, like go through like five folders deep, for example. Like right, yeah. choosing like oh, there's building, a, there's a compromise pieces, somewhere, building, right? Yeah. That we have to choose. <coughs> yeah, and there was a question about crossplay right there, <laughs> which we sort of answered. Ballista, earlier. ballista's in the plan for a siege rework, but that's a little bit down the line. Um, uh, and of course, uh, there was some mention of uh, I think in the uh, the uh, mounts announcement, we also talked about a mounts leveling system, which is something that we're adding as well, uh, which I think people are going to be really into. We're going to talk about that at a later stream. Because um, you know we have to save some stuff. Yeah, we for do later. We can't give it uh, away. Palm I know that people. I know that people. You know, want to hear about the new stuff. We're trying to, trying to avoid not talking too. Trying to avoid talking too much about mounts and all kind of stuff. They're gonna be great. It's gonna be fun to ride. I hope so. I hope so too. I played it just a second ago. Well, not a second <laughs> ago. I played it before we started the stream. It's getting quite tasty. Um, why can't we fight the servant of Tothamon, the mummy of the ring? Uh, because uh, that particular enemy has not been implemented yet, but uh, it's something that we need to implement. Uh, where's the single player action adventure Conan video game that was promised Chop Chop doesn't count? So, um, he's very, that person is very to the point. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, sometimes you gotta be straight to the point. So, oh, yeah. here's the thing about the single player action adventure Conan video game. Um, this was brought up on an investor call, and I get a lot of people asking me about this. And uh, the announcement that we put up there was that that had been put on hold, essentially, because it wasn't really up to uh, a level of quality that we wanted it to be. And so it was put on hold, and some of the... Priorities. Yeah, exactly. priorities. Some of the resources were put into other places. Exactly, like back into Conan Exiles. Back into Conan Exiles, mm -hmm. and some of them towards the uh, the June game as well that we're working on. That other sand game. That other... <laughs> Sand game. That's very true. There's a lot of sand, <laughs> lot of sand in Dune, and so I can't wait to make the the, the um, Anakin Skywalker references constantly. The, I don't like sand. It's coarse. It's uh -huh. gets okay, everywhere. Okay, sure. So you know, once the once that it's really been kicks a while off. So watch those films. Oof. They're not great. Uh, so yeah, that is that is the status. Of that it has been it has been put on hold, and the the uh, resources have been placed elsewhere. Yes. You know, and the reason I want to address this now is because players are. Asking, asking us about it, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a good thing to sort of you know. Sorcerer question mark. Well, sorcerer question mark is the same as mounts question mark. Yes, uh, when and if essentially. Uh -huh. uh, it's uh, it 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 is also it don't, bleh, Jesus, it is always a matter of priority and what we you know can or can't do. Uh, at the moment, there's no active work being done on sorcery. Like we know it's a thing that you a lot don't of people know. If want. That's true. 
As far as I know, as far as Jans no, knows, as far as I know, there's no active work being done on sorcery, and I'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> joke, joke, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, yes, let's see. Cool. Weathered Machine. Is it possible to have equivalent building designs for all DLC styles? For example, rounded doors, door frames for the game, base game materials. I would love Yamatai rounded doors. Um, uh, possible, sure. Expensive, probably. Yeah. Going back to DLC to add it, we could do. It depends. It depends how badly the community wants things like this. This comes down to communication. Yeah. If enough, pe if it's meaningful enough, and enough people ask for it, and we think it's worth doing, we'll probably do it. Yeah. And it's. That's uh, it. it is also one of the things where we that will end up adding even more building pieces yes, to exactly. everything. So you know, there's more stuff yeah. for people to go through, <coughs> and uh, you know, we <laughs> there's more than enough already. Mm. So it's uh, it's one of the things where you know we have to figure out a. Uh, Figure out a balance, essentially. Do 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 do. Here's a question. My eyes are going too fast. No, pa uh, Palm Five Twenty One asked the question about purges. Mm -hmm. High end purges give you access to high end humanoid thralls. Yes. That is tier not four thralls. tier four thralls. Excuse me. That is not as true to non humanoid purges. Um, that is a very good point. Uh, why? W I'll look into it. All right. Do they know about the pet leveling rework? Uh, we mentioned that there's a uh, a rework in the, in the, that the there's, there's a leveling system for the mounts at least. Okay, okay. And uh, maybe there'll be a leveling system for other things. Okay, so they don't know. I, I, oh, I'm gonna. I need to check what the announcement <laughs> actually says. <laughs> Interesting. Let's find out. Uh, um, I don't know how much I'm allowed to give away. Oops. Uh, let's let's let. Uh, can we? Oh well. That's Never interesting. Mind. Okay. Wrong website, maybe. Anyway. Something might happen with how you level pets. <laughs> yes. In um, Riders of Hyboria. You... It'll be good. It'll be interesting. We're gonna we, we think you're gonna we think people are gonna like what comes with alongside Riders of Hyboria. And so yeah. Um, if you don't know already, we have announced mounts and they're gonna be re at least the idea is that they're going to be releasing alongside the Riders of Harboria DLC, which is the final DLC, mm -hmm. in uh, December. Okay, this is frozen, so I'm going to go over frozen, here. Frozen. Jump across. Uh, <laughs> please explain the leveling system for what? Nope, we're going to save that for a different thing. Uh, that leveling system is a whole stream in and of itself. Yes, absolutely. It, it, yeah. Um, Fur95 says, I think the battle standards stopped working. Did it happen to someone else? If so, can they fix it? Um, please send us a DM and we can look into it. On PvP servers, they fundamentally do not function. That's the idea, at least. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Actually, well, we have a plan to, to rectify that, maybe. Because it would be cool if you can PvP your own clan's mates. But then again, you get into the whole of the, the, the rule set uh, <laughs> abuse cases. Jeffrey wants to know why Alex is sitting so close to me. Uh, well, because you know, I like. I just he likes to, to, like he likes to lean yes. on on the yes. thing here. I don't have a problem. With maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. After judo. That's true. You do yeah. judo. It's um, only awkward the first couple of times. Afterwards, it's not that big of a deal. I bet. <laughs> uh, thanks again for the scavenging mode. We're waiting for its return. Um, you're welcome, Paul. Um, this thing. It's just not having. It still doesn't like to refresh. It's a wonderful tool. If it it is a great tool. It's just when we have. Let's see how many people do we have? Lots of people. Hundreds of people sending messages at the same time. It gets kind of. It's like five hundred. Oi. Okay. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Well, that well that escalated. Uh, are we ever adding FOV to consoles? I don't think so. I Field think, of view. Yes. Uh, we. There's no plan. We can look into it. I don't see anything particularly negative by exposing it at least through maybe settings, not something that's the default. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with consoles is that the the hardware is not as up to date as the PC hardware, right? So we we have to look at it. We could do it. We just have to think about it and make it and set it up in such a way where it doesn't break anything unnecessarily. Yep. Yeah. Uh, why am I not leaving this bottle open? Because in case I drop it, there's I don't want there's, right I don't want there to be <laughs> water everywhere. There's literally a computer right there. And there's wires everywhere, and mm -hmm. mm, I don't want that on my hands, essentially. Uh, okay, so we're uh, we're coming up on 6 o'clock, so we've been doing this for about an hour. So we're going to take a couple of questions more, 
and then uh, it's been an hour already. I was having so much fun. It went really quickly. This is what happens? Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Question. 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 Questions. We've answered that before. Pass on your sugar aggressive settings for. We would love to do that, but that that involves um more than just allowing thralls to attack or not attack. So, like, if we do something like allowing you to choose the level of aggressiveness of your own pets, we would also want to extend it to make it a more meaningful integration of, the th of a feature, such as, um, for example, let's pretend you're a wild barbarian. Yeah. You're a wild barbarian that has enthralled three other potential barbarians. Why would it not be cool to have a warband of ten barbarians following you around and yeah. fighting with you? Yeah. I, I think that would be that'd fantastic. That would be really cool. Yeah. yeah. But that's a lot of work. We have to sit down and, and plan it and set it up and make it feasible. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you plan to add new designs for drawbridges and elevators? That's a good question. We could do that. Could we be. could do that. Yes. I mean, I don't see why not. I'm we'll answering for things. you now. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> that's, rel that's relatively straightforward because the functionality, so the functionality exists. We have to repurpose it with a new aesthetic. Yes. Uh, suspension bridges, uh, suspension bridge, floating on water. I mean, we sort of had the suspension bridges with, like, with the, the um, yeah, with the extending platforms. Yes, and, uh, and you know, the the rope bridges and stuff. Mm. Which, but you know, so uh, <laughs> this was also brought up a couple of times. Um, the uh, rope bridges uh, still adhere to the um, rules of building, which means that you will need yeah. uh, pillars and stuff yeah. to you know yeah. keep them up. And the reason for that is we can't really put a building item behind that like that breaks the rules of building essentially yes. behind dlc because yes. then it's you unfair would to the base yeah game. exactly it's, it's unfair, unfair to the, base to, the, to the like, other to the other people yes um we did talk about it and we did consider it and we did try it in the in the end it proved to be expensive and difficult and for the point that the answer is brought up yeah. um controversial yes like we uh like our the the the, um, the tree top platform the tree top mm. foundation for example is already <laughs> being brought up by some people as sort of like a, an advantage. Yes, that exactly, DLC because it allows have. you to build in places where other people cannot build. I mean, you can still build up in trees using regular foundations, but like now you just have not a circle. Not in the same foundation, not in the same way, yeah. Um, so, you know, we, the idea of the DLCs is that it's just, you know, some extra stuff, but it's not extra stuff that gives you an advantage, essentially. Mm. And then having something that, you know, breaks the rules yeah. of the building system, that would this be is, very this unfair. Is, this is something that we can continuously discuss in the yeah. office where it's it's a um we do not want to sell power because it is unfair to sell power yes uh, but we do want to give you options for meaningful play styles and for some people a meaningful play style that is different to another play style is equivalent to power because that's all based on perception and yeah. personal preference right so it's it's a it's a it's a subject that we try to approach very gently and with um with uh, with a lot of understanding because it, it really ruffles feathers quite easily. <laughs> one one person's play style is another person's um, power creep, it's unfortunately. A, and on that bombshell, I think we're going to end the stream for now. Uh, but uh, this was fun. I had fun. I think, we should, do, I think we should do more of these. I, Absolutely. I think we should do more of these like post-update post sure. Q&A kind of things. Because yep. it's, you know, it's good to you know sit down and be like, hey, you just chew the fat for this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. We're sorry about this, this, and this. <laughs> if, you know... If, if stuff breaks, which they sometimes they do. They really want um, crossbows. I might have to just people, implement that in my spare time. People absolutely want crossbows. We'll see. Uh, and uh, thank you so much to Nicole and Andy, who thank have been guys. sitting in chat, both on YouTube and on Twitch, helping us out with, uh, you know, everything that needs, uh, mm. needs to be helped out. And I'm going to find a person that we can raid as sort of a final, final, final thing before we leave. And uh, yeah, thank you, Alex, for uh, thank you guys. for joining me. Uh, thank you, everyone in chat, for joining us. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, so it's another Funcom Variety Friday. Uh, and since it's Halloween, since it is the spoop season, we are going to be playing spoop. Spoop. Yeah. Okay. It's spoopy. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it's like sp I, I know, it's I internet know. talk for spoopy. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and since it's the spoop I had Rebecca Black playing it through my head. <laughs> Since it is the spoop season, uh, myself and Andy and Nicole are going to be playing some hide and shriek. Oh, yeah. um, and I think they're going to be hosting, so I'm going to join up for a couple of rounds. And then I'm going to be in chat. 
and uh, we want you to join us to play some hide and shriek, which is free on Steam. I wonder uh, if that can so, uh, a game. Hmm? I wonder if that can evolve into a drinking game. Every time, you, could, every time you get scared, you, you have to shot. That's, that's very good. Oh, that's very good. It's a that's, bit rough. It's dangerous, <laughs> and I'm not allowed to drink on stream anymore. So, you oh, know. that's the thing. <laughs> that's a, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> join us tomorrow on Friday. It's going to be super fun. We're going to play hide and shriek. Uh, it's free on Steam. Go download it, and uh, we're going to start the uh, raid thing. So give Lorthon our best. Uh, hopefully, uh, they don't log out immediately after we're done with the stream, which has happened before. Uh, but until then, until next week, uh, we will see you guys later. See ya. Hadbra.